What should I eat to live longer? This is a question that uh, most of us have asked. But if I were to have you get a piece of paper and a pencil and actually list the foods that you should be eating on a regular basis during a normal day, I have no doubt that uh, all of you would be able to have a correct listing of high plant foods, uh, low sugar, low fat, low red meat. Uh, so the issue is not the knowledge that we have uh, about what we should be eating. The issue is being able to do it. Uh, what I'd like to do in this session is just go through some of the uh, issues dealing with uh, nutrition and some of the advice that uh, health professionals are giving about how we should eat to live longer just to reinforce probably what you already know. Um, the information I'm going to go through today actually comes from a uh, the Oregon Public Health Division uh, through a publication they have called the CD Summary. I've listed on the screen the uh, website uh, that you can access. It's a very good website for data. They have lots of graphics. They have archives of health issues. Not only do they deal with nutritional type uh, health issues, but anything that would affect the health of Oregonians uh, from anywhere from microbial diseases to uh, suicides to, um, you know, four times a year they'll have nutrition issues. Um, but anything that uh, the uh, Department of Human Services would deal with, they have uh, a CD summary that they've published uh, once a month for many, many years. So you can archive those. It be a very good site to have if you're doing some type of a paper that you need some statistics about because th they do have good statistics, good data. So it'd be very good, uh, very handy. But I'm going to give uh, get a lot of my information, my data from the CD summary that we're going to go through. So what I wanted to start with is just look at the biggest health problems uh, in Oregon. And uh, basically biggest health problems that lead to death. And you might not be surprised that uh, cardiovascular disease is uh, number one. About 38% of all deaths in Oregon uh, deal with cardiovascular disease. Uh, Cancer is number two, 24% of all deaths are chronic lung diseases, which could be emphysema, bronchitis, asthma, COPD, those about 12%, and then diabetes about 10%. Now, diabetes does have a relationship with cardiovascular disease, but they have isolated that because it is a, a big issue. Uh, in our society today and growing. So we'll talk more about that later. Uh, just some graphics um, for your interest. Death rates leading to causes. You can see that um, heart disease uh, seems to be going down. Cancer is kind of at a level. Uh, diabetes uh, is kind of level, but it is it is starting to creep upwards. Uh, but I don't think that, uh, looking at heart disease, uh, I don't think that the uh, reduction in deaths per 100,000 population are due to uh, what our population is doing better nutritionally or in lifestyle. It's mainly because of heroic means, uh, meaning that uh, we have a lot more health, uh, better health care and we can do a lot better surgeries, uh, bypasses, and things like that. We have a lot of medications, uh, Lipitor and those that, that can deal with heart disease where uh, have medications to control hypertension, that kind of thing. So I don't think that the population as a whole is really doing any better with lifestyle issues, which would be, you know, uh, increase in exercise, increase in proper nutrition. It's more that our medical uh, uh, facilities are better and our medical knowledge is better, but we're still not uh, doing much in prevention. Uh, and so that's that's what the concern of a nutritionist would be is, is dealing with those uh, prevention issues before we have to re realize the heroic means that um, would have to take place. Uh, life expectancy, again, just 
for information's sake. We can see that life expectancy is going up, but again, not necessarily because of lifestyle issues or doing better lifestyle uh, that we have, but uh, with uh, more higher technical uh, health technical knowledge and better medications and uh, better diagnosis and that kind of thing. Um, just got this information out of I believe the Harvard School of, of Public Health and just you know eight ways that they feel are important for um, uh, eating healthier, uh, eating slower basically has to do with um, takes about 20 minutes before your uh, feelings, you know, the signaling feelings of fullness take place. So if you eat slower, you're likely to get fuller faster. And as long as you're not part of the clean plate club, which basically would be you, you can't stand to leave things on your plate, then you should be eating less. Um, and uh, they noted that eating fast is strongly associated with obesity, increased body mass index, or BMI. Um, plus, it, if you eat slowly and chew your food longer, it's going to promote uh, smooth and complete digestion. So that's an important thing. Uh, portion size. Um, you know, portion size is a big issue now. Uh, in the past, we've talked a lot about uh, controlling our fat intake. Now the mantra is controlling portion size because we as a population have done very well at controlling uh, our fat intake because we do eat um, lower fat foods but uh, we're eating too much bulk, too much food so the, the big mantra now is to decrease portion size and uh, not supersize things, that kind of thing. And the other ones, I think uh, you realize how important they are. Uh, but uh, number seven, eliminate soda drinks. Soda drinks are becoming a real, real issue um, because uh, the thing with uh, liquid drinks is they don't fill you up. They just make you, uh, you know, they, they actually increase your appetite in some cases. And uh, you can, you know, a big gulp can be 800 calories or more. And you don't realize that you can still be hungry uh, after you drink um, a big gulp. So it's, uh, it's becoming a real uh, issue. Uh, there's no nutritional value. As far as they're concerned, there is nothing good about a soda. I think the only possibility would be enjoyment, but um, it would be better, you know, water or unsweetened fruit juice would be a lot better. Uh, even uh, diet products, it's, uh, it's better to eat uh, some kind of a diet bar uh, as opposed to drinking a diet drink because the drinks really don't make you feel full. You don't have that chewing action that makes a difference. And so when you're actually chewing food, it makes a difference and you can actually, it actually works better if you do that. And then the biggie obviously would be self-discipline. Uh, that's a big, big issue because as we mentioned at the very beginning, we all know how to eat. It's just that sometimes we just don't. Uh, we talk ourselves out of it or we talk ourselves into eating something we know we shouldn't be. Um, but uh, that's it's a, it's a hard thing. Uh, some of you that have uh, gained weight and are trying to lose it, you realize how hard it is emotionally. Uh, is, uh, it's a very difficult thing to discipline yourself to eat less food or eat the right foods that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, eight foods that may ruin your health. Uh, I don't think there's any question about these. I think all of us know this. Uh, it's just, once again, you, we talk ourselves out of it. We go and we do it just because, you know, that's our life and we want to enjoy life. And this is part of enjoyment of life. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pay me now or pay me later issue in that, you know, do you want to enjoy your life now and pay for it later with heroic means or getting, you know, a, a heart bypass or, 
you know, now, do you, uh, can you never eat these things again? No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is there are some individuals who eat these types of foods three times a day. Uh, they will go and you know get breakfast at a fast food place on their way to work. They will go out to for lunch and then they will grab something on their way home. Um, but we uh, we can have French fries and burgers every once. In a while. I mean, I just went to Chicago and uh, for heaven's sake, uh, I had to have a Chicago hot dog. I actually went to a Cubs game and you can't go to a baseball game without having a hot dog. It's like an American. And so I searched out a Chicago hot dog. I was a little bit disappointed in the end because the uh, Chicago hot dog tastes like a regular hot dog. Uh, there wasn't anything magical about it, uh, but at least I can say I, I had it. But I don't eat hot dogs very often, but probably the first hot, hot dog I've had in a year. But, you know, it's the first ball game I've been to in a year. But... Um, you know, you can eat these every once in a while. It's just if you eat them really often, and now how often is often, I can't tell you. Nobody can tell you. But uh, recommendations, you know, bacon, those kinds of things, maybe once a week, uh, that kind of thing uh, at the most. So anyway, but if you look at this list and you say, I eat those fairly often, we need to make some adjustments there, uh, not only with what we eat, but the serving size, you know, kind of thing. The good nutrition solutions are uh, based on the CD summary, a cal caloric restriction. Uh, decreased obesity is a huge, huge issue. Uh, I'll show you a graphic after this, but 64% or more of individuals within this country are either overweight or obese. That's becoming a huge, huge problem because it's not only increasing health problems, but it's also making us adjust uh, lifestyle and the things uh, that um, associated with obesity. For example, larger seats on airplanes so they can sit fewer people, um, bigger caskets, you know, they had to make them wider. Uh, ambulances carrying cranes uh, because they can't lift the people, you know, into the ambulances. So it's becoming an issue besides healthcare. It's becoming a social issue with uh, having to really adjust things for obesity, that kind of thing. Decreased total food intake is a, is an important issue. Again, uh, the mantra in the past has been to lower fat intake but uh, that hasn't worked uh, because we've done that as a population but we're eating more and more food um, and so portion size is kind of now the big mantra what you'll see in some advertisements uh, is that they will say this food has lower fat than this uh, I can think of one commercial where it says you know this this product has this much total fat and this product has a lot more total fat but if you look at the total calories it's actually more calories in the lower fat product because of all the bread and everything so that you know and, and the increased bread is going to turn to fat if you don't need it so we have to look at our total caloric intake our total food intake as opposed to fat intake one of the biggest problems in this country is we don't eat enough plant foods. Uh, the uh, goal is to have 60 percent plant food and 40 percent animal food but we're pretty much reversed. 40 percent uh, plant food and 60 percent animal food intake. So we need to change that for three main reasons. Uh, number one, phytochemicals. Uh, these are uh, plant chemicals that are beyond vitamins and minerals and they're starting to be uh, viewed as just as important as vitamins and minerals uh, for reducing risk of disease. So that's one main reason for plant food intake. We're just not getting enough of those to a lot of them are antioxidants, a lot of them are anti-cancer um, a lot of them boost our immune system, so we need a lot of 
of plants and good, you know, we're talking about colorful plants. We're talking of, you know, one of the mantras is to eat to color, eat close to the earth and eat to color. And so the brighter the vegetables, you know, the oranges and the reds and the dark green leafies and those, uh, you know, the blues of blueberries and, and those kinds of things are phytochemicals. So they're usually uh, things like carotenoids and anthocyanins and, and those kinds of things that give color to plants. And uh, so they are very, very important. Oligosaccharides, these are um, prebiotic, uh, which means they encourage the growth of probiotic organisms. And they are, have been shown uh, to be increased intestinal health, but also overall health, increasing uh, calcium absorption, lowering cholesterol, those kinds of things. So oligosaccharides that you'll only find in plant foods uh, are important to um, why we should intake plant foods. And then you've heard fiber for a long time, insoluble and soluble fibers, very important. We're, uh, this population only gets about half the amount of fiber that uh, we need. So uh, we need about 14 grams for every thousand calories we eat. And most of the students that uh, when I get their nutrition surveys, are basically getting, you know, eating 2,000 calories or more, and they're only getting maybe 12 or 14 grams. So they're about half the amount that we need. Very important for reducing risk of heart disease, reducing risk of cancers, um, you know, other diseases like diverticulitis and those kinds of things. So you can only find these in plant foods. You don't get these three phytochemicals, oligosaccharides, and fiber from animal foods. And some of the health issues that we're um, dealing with today are because we are not eating plant foods. Um, so uh, anyway, this is the this is the um, figure I was talking about is how uh, our overweight and obese is just increasing. Uh, you know, we're getting close to that seventy percent range. Uh, with that. But the real troubling one is when you go down at the bottom of that uh, graphic and you see overweight at two to five years is increasing, overweight 12 to 19 years is increasing. Uh, it's pretty much assured that an obese or overweight child is going to be an obese adult. It just won't change that much. And so the concern is, you know, the people who are obese today were not obese as children. And so now we have a lot of obese children. Type 2 diabetes is increasing in the adolescent um, age group because of obesity. But it's just going to increase and increase. So it is a huge issue. Uh, and one of the main things is because we're eating too much food, drinking too much soda that is very high calorie and doesn't fill you up. It's very important. Rules of thumb, moderation, um, regular select nutrient dense foods. Uh, nutrient dense foods are, are foods that are high in nutrients and low in calories. Uh, so things, again, plant foods are going to be high in nutrients and low in calories. So these would be things that um, you would need to increase. Uh, select energy-dense foods. So energy-dense foods need to be reduced. Energy-dense foods are foods that are high in calorie for the amount of weight. So, for example, potato chips have a lot of calories for the amount of weight there is some evidence that uh, we eat to weight. So a pound of, say, uh, plant foods versus a pound of potato chips, you're going to get a lot more calories in the potato chips and uh, things like peanuts. and things. Even though peanuts are pretty good foods as far as the oils and stuff, they are considered very energy dense. There are a lot of calories in them because they have a lot of oil and things like that. So we need to moderate those kinds of things. Um, 
variety, select foods from each food group. One of the things that uh, if you're in the class, uh, the nutrition class here at Columbia Gorge that we'll talk about is the specifically the different kinds of phytochemicals in that each food group has its own type of phytochemicals. That's why within each food group you have uh, plants, for example, very uh, different colors and they have different flavors and different textures and that kind of thing because of what how they're made they're different so you can't just say well I'm going to get all my vegetables from a carrot well that's fine uh, you uh, you need to uh, they're good but you they only have one type of phytochemical but there's also phytochemicals you know in in legumes, there's phytochemicals in fruits, there's phytochemicals in vegetables, there even in meats and some zoochemicals that um, you don't hear much about, but they're starting to see some of those are important also. So a variety, I think the key is a variety of foods that we need. Uh, different foods from food foods from each group, which I was just kind of mentioning. Um, if you're looking at vegetables, you know there's different kinds of phytochemicals in in uh, spinach versus radishes versus carrots, you know versus beets, those kinds of things. So we need those phytochemicals because they have a specific purpose in reducing risk. So we need to get a variety from each group, not just one thing from each group. Uh, food flavors and textures, a lot of this has to do with enjoyment. I mean, let's, let's think about it. If you don't enjoy your food, you're not going to stick to a diet. And so uh, different food flavors, so different spices, you know, so, uh, you know, foods from India, from, you know, Mexico, Central America, from Asia, you know, uh, they we need those different flavors and different textures. We need crunchy. We need uh, cold. We need hot. We uh, smooth. We need all those different flavors and textures actually to enjoy food. So rules of thumb are no different than what your mom used to tell you. Uh, eat in moderation and get a lot of variety. I think those have not changed over the years. It's just that um, we just don't do it. So what should I eat to live longer? You know, the, your rules should be eat in moderation. Okay. You can eat anything you want, but in moderation. Okay. Even there's such thing as too much of a good thing. If you eat too much fiber, you can get a phytobasor, which is a fiber ball. So even too much of a good thing is not good. So eat with moderation and get a lot of variety. And uh, if we can do this and we can uh, monitor our intake and how much we eat, uh, we can go a long way in improving our nutrition.